With so many investment options out there, real estate is king. Let me tell you why. Look, all that's going on right now with inflation, rising interest rates, the stock market is going crazy, Bitcoin and NFTs, everything's fluctuating, everything's volatile. And to make matters worse, we're on the verge of World War III. So everything is all up in the air. Look, everything is cyclical. When it comes to financial markets, everything has a correction to it and a crash to it. Everything goes up and down because it's always fueled by the dynamics of how we behave as human beings. Now, everybody feels a little unsettled when there's economic shift and changes and worldwide uncertainty certainty, that's only normal. Then you've got the pandemic and all the pressure of everything that's going on with the fact that supplies are slow to come into stores. A lot of uncertainty creates uncertain behavior and the possibility of being dragged into, let's say another world conflict is really heavy for investors and people don't know how to invest and when to invest and what's gonna happen. I can understand that everyone's worried. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to take advantage of what's going on with the stock market by investing in real estate. So if you're worried about the volatility of the marketplace, I'm gonna offer you some suggestions to utilize right now that will impact your real estate portfolio in a positive way. So why should you be listening to me? My name is Munif Ali and I have built multiple brick and mortar companies. I have dozens of properties here in Southern California and I've also closed billions of dollars of sales. So I know a little bit about investing and hopefully I can share some advice for you that's gonna guide you in the right direction. Full disclosure, I'm not selling you anything. I'm just giving you advice for free. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button with a little bit of liberal pressure and let the algorithm at YouTube know that our content is worthy so I can continue to make videos like this every single week. So we can all understand how everybody feels a little worried, a little concerned. So if you are worried about the real estate market and the volatility of the stock market, let's look at some things that you can do in an informed way that will put you on the right path and make sure that your money, your investment, and your real estate portfolio are all growing in the right way. The first rule of all investing, ladies and gentlemen, is do not panic. Don't act with emotion, but rather with logic. Think about the impact your actions will have if you get scared and start to take out all your money or start selling your properties because you're uncertain of what's taking place. Now, if you look at the history of most things, long-term investment strategy beats everything else. Even if the market is crashing right now, chances are real estate market, stock market, financial market, they all come back. If it's not in a few days, in a few weeks, a month, and it could take a couple of years, but it will always come back up and set new records later on. So look, any downturn in any market is always going to bring you opportunities. And it is in these moments where cash is king so that if you had the cash readily available, you could take advantage of bargains and sales. It's the same thing that is true for the stock market. If you have the cash available and the market goes down, you can apply that cash to buy more stock. But if you have no money or no credit, you can't really buy anything, even if it's on sale. Think about that. You don't have a wallet. So what could you buy even if prices were to fall? So even as a real estate investor or a stock market investor, investor, you're always affected by what's going on in these economic cycles, whether it's recessions or depressions or anything else that comes along. It's always going to affect one thing, and that's jobs. And jobs are what keeps your tenants paying rent. It's going to affect and limit their ability to even pay rent or your ability to raise rent in the future. So be aware of financial cycles out there. Number two is the time to make sure that you have an emergency fund handy. A lot of investors go out there and use all of the capital they have to buy, whether it's stocks or Bitcoins or real estate, it doesn't really matter. We have that approach. If something's working, let me put all my money into it. Whatever the hot ticket at the time might be, it might cause you a little bit of issue. It doesn't matter what you invest in, stocks, bonds, real estate, Bitcoin. Having an emergency fund, you'll be able to cover at least six months of your household expenses. I know in other videos I've talked about three, but it, as an investor, you need to have three extra months at least and a lot of investors, especially early on because they put all of their money into the investment, they don't really have money that's a lifesaver in the event something happens with their property, especially unexpected stuff. And it always happens in real estate where all of a sudden you know, your tenant loses a job, you're not getting rent, a tree falls on someone's car, or you need some kind of medical bills paid. Think about that. All of these things are coming up all the time and mayhem happens. So instead of wreaking havoc on your system and not having any money to cover a mortgage or cover a bill, that comes up. As a savvy investor, you need to continue to build your savings so that for each property, you have an emergency fund. And then for your own living expenses, you have three to six months of living expenses also there to be able to keep your property maintained and addressed all the time. And think about it. You're all fine and dandy while your tenant is paying, but if something happens or the government decides that because of the pandemic, they're going to put a moratorium on evictions and your tenants find out, this is an actual true story, they might stop paying. And then you go months with bills racking up. So that's why it's 
really, really vital and important that just like every other business, you have an operating expense and emergency fund is the way to go because you never know what an economic cycle can do to change your circumstances. And think about this, everything from mortgage insurance to taxation to getting your grass mowed, having that extra cushion is always going to help you. While timing for any one of those things might be unpredictable, costly repairs are right around the corner to take you out of business. Like I said, eventually your property is gonna need a roof or a new heater or a major issue could pop up. Number two is to get out of high interest debt fast. The faster, the better. And every investor should not be paying high interest rates. A lot of times, you know, you've got the prime rate plus 15 and these credit cards that a lot of investors do repairs and stuff on, you're paying an exorbitant amount of money. And there are times when a credit card is needed, but if you think about it, you're paying typical interest rate of let's say 20% on a credit card and you've got $25,000 in debt that is really easy to do. You're blowing $5,000 a year away for no reason. So give yourself and your property portfolio a little bit of a raise. Think about it, $5,000, you could take that five and put it into a compound interest bearing account, or you could take that 5,000 and buy more shares of whatever you want. $5,000 is a lot of money to leave on the table while paying high interest rates. Also remember, like if you're on the fence about buying a property or refinancing or any one of those things, as interest rate starts to rise and that's there to cool off inflation, it might be marginal when you're trying to buy a new house, like five and a half percent to six percent might not seem like a big jump in your monthly payment but think about it in the terms of 10 years or in 20 or 30 years that could be thousands of dollars if not hundreds of thousands of dollars so if you can afford to buy right now continue to buy real estate now because the interest rate seems like it's going to keep rising so as home prices continue to rise interest rate is rising you might have to come up with more down payment and also be hit with private mortgage insurance which is pmi Right now is the time to think about buying more. Now, just like the stock market, it's fluctuating and investors, you know, come over to real estate when the stock market's not doing so well. So the stock market historically is not doing well. The real estate market does get flooded with investors that come over there. So before that starts to happen, identify good deals in your local marketplace so that you can buy. Now, real estate market is not as volatile, obviously, as the stock market, but it also doesn't give you the same type of rewards or returns like the stock market does, where you see meteoric values like shoot up on a rising stock, you're not gonna see the same kind of trend. Ever since 1940, home values have gone up 5.5%, which is great, but during the same period, the stock market has averaged over 10% in gain for the same year. So at a minimum, consider adding real estate to your overall investment portfolio as another spoke in your wheel. I did the opposite. I went all real estate, didn't have other things, and that when the market started to turn, that definitely hurt me. So I always advise people just starting out to put a sprinkling of real estate here and there and then put the rest of your money in other investments as well. It provides a steady income. You have some tax advantages as well. And then you can rent out the property and most of the time cover your mortgage expenses, your insurance, your taxes, and some maintenance costs. Now, there are a few areas around the country where you might not get a profit right away. So you don't get any cash flow whatsoever and you're just depending on the appreciation of the real estate. Now, you might not see that as an advantage, but in markets such as that, like your hot markets like my Miami or Los Angeles or New York or San Francisco, those type of markets that are primary markets tend to appreciate at a faster rate. And so over time, you're gonna end up having more appreciation. So your property is going to be worth more, you might not necessarily be making cash flow in the beginning. So consider all those things when picking and choosing an area to invest in. But don't just jump into real estate because you took some guy's course out there. Do your homework because real estate is complex and sometimes it's riskier than you might be prepared for. One of the biggest advantages to real estate is the power of leverage itself where you can go out there and buy a large investment or little or no money down. You can't do that in the stock market per se unless you're buying on margin, but you're spending 50,000 on margin, you're only buying $50,000 worth. Conversely, in real estate, if you've got $50,000 down, you might be able to get a $500,000 dollar piece of an asset which only grows over time so there's advantages to both there's upsides and downsides to both real estate and the stock market the other thing to remember that real estate is different from the stock market in that you can't sell portions of your property away. And when it comes to you want to liquidate, you have to sell the whole entire property or refinance. Whether in stock market, you can sell shares.
shares. You don't have to sell your entire portfolio on that company. For example, I buy a thousand shares of Tesla. If I want to liquidate something, I can sell a few pieces or a few shares away of Tesla. On a house, I can't really sell a window and a door. I can't sell portions of the house. I need to sell the whole house or do what I've done quite a lot, which refinance the property, take the money out from the accrued equity and then buy something else. So you have to learn the in and outs of real estate to be able to utilize it for what it is. Now, in my previous point, I talked about not being able to buy bits and pieces. Well, you actually kind of can. It's called wheat or real estate that's traded publicly. Now, let's say you don't want to be bothered by coming up with a huge down payment and you don't want to be bothered by being a landlord and you just don't really know your way around real estate. You can have a real estate investment trust or a REIT. And this is where it's kind of an index fund where companies buy large portfolios of different kinds of properties, whether it's apartment buildings or warehouses or what have you. Each is different and you can invest in that fund much like a stock. And if they make smart choices on the properties, the fund performs well and they keep buying more property. Now REITs are traded very similar to stocks, giving back a pretty high yield. Now when the, when the real estate market goes up and down, it also fluctuates. So the great thing about REITs are that by law, they have to pay 90% of their taxable income in the form of dividends back to you, the shareholder, and that happens annually. Now there are ETFs that are focused in all kinds of REITs. So do your research before getting into one. Most REITs have what they call a beta. And what a beta is, it's their measurement of volatility. For example, one is a neutral volatility. That means that it just kind of goes with the stock market. It's even if the stock market's going up or down, that's what their beta rating is. If it's one and a half, then it's 50% more volatile than the stock market. If it's below that number, then it's less volatile than the stock market. So any REIT that is a beta below 1.0 basically means that it's less volatile than the stock market. Public storage, which is a REIT that focuses on storage units, has a beta of 0.26. So that's relatively safe when you compare it to the volatility of the stock market. On the other hand, Realty Income, which is a REIT that focuses on the retail market, has a beta of 0.8, meaning that it's 80% as volatile as the market. Many people coming into the falls of investing are also scared, but a lot of savvy investors know that volatility equals opportunity. The best strategy to have, like I've mentioned, is a long-term approach to anything you invest in. When the market fluctuates, pay attention and see the opportunities that are there for you to see. For example, a sharp decline in the market means that it's time to go shopping. Stuff is gonna be on sale. If you wanna buy a jacket, you wanna buy it in the summertime, right? That's when the jacket is probably going to be priced lower. So get ready and understand the stock market, beta, REITs, NFTs, and real estate, and utilize all of these things that you are learning about as a diversified approach to handling your money the right way. Remember that real estate can be a rewarding passive investment where somebody else is paying down your debt while you're doing something else. And as it appreciates, it gives you more cash flow. But it can also be a risky venture if you don't fully understand and are swayed by the constant barrage of a lack of information out there. So pick wisely. You're wondering if now is the time to get into real estate investing overall? I made a video specifically about the real estate market this year. Go ahead and hit this video next.